I have mine set up right now to recognize penguins. Okay. Seemed fitting for this. Nice, yeah. Uh, all sorts of reasons. I mean, um, suppose you want to recognize, you know, what species a tree is. Mm -hmm. Or suppose you want to recognize a person. I don't know about you, but I'm horrible with names. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it'd be really handy to have you know, something like Google Glass that can just, you know, recognize people from your Facebook friends list, pop up a little bio. Name up there and yeah, then. put their last couple posts from their wall up there. So you're like, oh, hey, John. <laughs> How have you been? I see, you know, kids are growing. <laughs> Uh, but it doesn't even have to be that sophisticated. So I have a little home security system that's just a camera. It's motion activated, but as you can imagine, there's lots of things that are in motion that I'm not interested in. Uh, cats, raccoons, leaves, rain. So I get a lot of false alarms, a lot of false emails. So I'm also training it to uh, recognize things that I'm interested in, you know, people, burglars, Unicorns. So you have uh, a, like a whitelist on it. That yeah, and that's that's a very simple binary classification. So let's see. How many people here are kind of familiar with Docker? I've heard of it. I've heard of it. I've heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, let's I can't see. see. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, with Docker, you can, you can um, essentially utilize a pre-trained container. Uh, part of the challenge with, with building a competent uh, machine learning neural network is training it. And training a, a neural network takes a lot of data, a lot of time, a lot of resources. Uh, so. To start with, we're going to essentially just use a pre-trained uh, algorithm, neural network, that's just sitting in a Docker container. So all we have to do is run it. Um, the container we're going to use is at gcr.io slash tensorflow. And you can go there and actually check out the the code that's running in it. So uh, Google has already done the work of uh, taking this neural network and hammering it with all the resources at their disposal over two weeks, eight GPUs um, to get it to this point. And this neural network's already pre-designed. So the other, the other challenge is architecting your, own, your neural network. So you have the right number of layers, that do the right things. So this is already going through and doing edge detection, you know, comparing contrast colors, all those things. So all you have to do is train the last thin little layer, which is really the least amount of work. So it's been trained to understand pictures? Yeah, pretty much. And, but does it, under, does it go to people, or is it effectively, he knows what a picture is and knows what bits of pictures are, but doesn't understand what's in pictures? No, you have to tell it so you're going to have to actually give it batches of data and then label those batches of data. So there's these 100 things, that's a unicorn. There's these 100 things, that's Tux, the, the penguin. Is it, uh, is it a probability thing? Like it's a, like it's a high, high probability that this most likely is a unicorn, so label it as a unicorn. What it actually does is it takes the image and breaks it into... Uh, a two-dimensional matrix of the pixels, and then each of those cells adds an additional three dimensions for, for red, green, and blue. So you have this, this kind of five-dimensional matrix of data. And um, it's actually using regression, it's, it's using gradient descent to compare uh, the new image to a bunch of weights that it's built on training data. So 
what we do is we see this, this big matrix of weights with random data, and then we start piping in pictures of Tux the penguin, and it's gonna start trying to map this, this five-dimensional curve. Uh, I find it easier to just think about like uh, two dimensions to start with, so like a line, and then using linear regression. So if you've ever done like the scatter plot and trying to find the best fit line, mm -hmm. it's the exact same thing, but with like five dimensions. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to map it, and then once you get that best fit, uh, you know, the y-intercept and the slope, those are your weights. And that's, that's the actual training data we store, and those weights represent, you know, what at the core is Tux the penguin, or a unicorn. Yeah. So the technique you were using, are you, <clears throat> for the, let's say the, the example you gave of one that actually classify trees, right? Mm -hmm. um, are you training a single model to try and weight across all the trees that you wanted to identify? Or are you doing an individual model for basically a yes or no for each type and then applying all the models? Because you could potentially have multiple types of trees in one image, right? How right. Did you, how'd you get that? So, so what this actually mm -hmm. does is allows you to list as many classifiers as you want and then it will run through each of those independently and it will take the results for that and run it through a sigmoid function so you end up with uh, essentially a percentile weight for which which bucket it thinks it's in Where yeah. would the doctor computer do it ah so uh gcr.io slash tensorflow slash tensorflow. And if you already have Docker, you can just run that container. Uh, run IT dash V. Um, the other thing you're going to have to do when we run this container is you're going to have to include a directory with the images that you want to train on. So you're going to have to use the dash V flag and then uh, specify the directory where you have your images that you're going to want to train on. So I have this uh, slash TF files uh, slash Linux colon slash Linux and what's in there is just I have Android, Tux, and not Tux. So Android is, well, just a handful of kind of Android pictures. Um, there's this extension, this Chrome extension that's really handy. So if you do like Tux, Linux, and an image search, um, there's this Chrome extension called FATKUN, F-A-T-K-U-N, uh, batch download. So you can go to uh, any page with images, and you can say, uh, open up all the images for this page, and then you can batch save every image on that page. And since this page innates, if you scroll down, you can scroll down and then Pat Kuhn it and get more. So it's a really quick and easy way uh, to get a bunch of, of sample images. Uh, the one caveat with, with this uh, TensorFlow container, which is using Google's inception model for, for the image recognition, it, it's expecting JPEGs. So add a filter to your image search to, to keep it to JPEGs. All right, so. What's the um, Chrome add on called? Uh, Fatcoon? F A T K U N? Thank you. I know. It, That's the more. <laughs> sounds sketchy. <laughs> I do not endorse <laughs> Fatcoon. You're not sponsored by No. 
Though if they're looking for a sponsor, I'm, <laughs> not, I'm open to uh, money. <laughs> that fat coon money. All right, so when we start up our container, the first thing we have to do, well, the first thing we should do is, is pop up and make sure that uh, that directory with our images that we passed in is there. So there's my Linux. Uh, it's got my subdirectory in there with Android, Tux, not Tux. And let me see if I can make this a little bigger for you. So, got all my Tux images in there. The next thing that we have to do is go into the TensorFlow directory. And what we're going to do is do a get pool. And what this is going to do is, is uh, pull in any of the latest uh, training data that Google's done. So we're up to date. Good to go. Now, we're going to take this massive command. And this is how we actually retrain on our images. And so what we're doing is we're, we're calling a built-in Python script uh, under TensorFlow examples image retraining retrain.py. Um, and then we have to specify a few flags. There's a problem net directory, and you usually want to just tuck that in next to wherever your images are. So I'm doing slash Linux slash bottlenecks. Uh, you have to specify how many training steps you're going to iterate through. Uh, 500, I found, could be a good number. Um, you can do more if you're more patient. Uh, where you want to actually drop your model. So slash Linux slash inception. Uh, the graph, the graph is, is what we're really looking for out of this. So I'm just putting that in as retrain graph dot pb. Um, in addition to the graph, we need, we need the corresponding label. So not just you know, the weights that we associate with, with you know, a given classification, but what we call that classification. So that'll go into retrain labels txt, which you know, we'll just say Android Tux, not Tux. And then lastly, of course, where the images are. So, if you got a minute. What we'll see is it actually going through, fetching the images, and then it'll start creating those bottlenecks, which in this case, it did fairly quickly because I ran it recently. Now it's going to start actually retraining those weights. So it's, it's, it's not linear regression because we're, we're dealing with more dimensions. It's gradient descent. But it's, it's starting to map those curves to the data it's getting from each of these images. And then what it's giving out is entropy and error. So just like with linear regression, you can, you can calculate you know, the error, how far off you are you know, from points and, and how much noise you have around it. And that's going to translate to, to, to how confident we are in our training. Yeah? Um, do you think, have you played around with, um, I know you mentioned 500 steps, you found to be pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, do you think much of the, uh, what do you call it, the skewing or the, uh, I know there's a, a bunch of different manipulations you can apply. Do you recommend using those? Or I recommend them? playing with them. <laughs> so that's. That's the million dollar question right now. Is it, with each of these algorithms, there's, there's a, a plethora of what they call hyperparameters. So, so these are little you know, training steps, little things you can tweak that, that actually change how you, know, you can change um, the uh, training rate. So how, how uh, much you nudge that, that curve each time you get a new image. And if that's too high, you'll actually jump over the correct answer. You'll over, overfit the curve, and it'll just keep bouncing back and forth, and it'll never converge on the right you know, kind of area. But if, it's, if your training rate's too low, 
it'll just kind of slowly, slowly, slowly kind of map to that curve and maybe never even reach it. So there's all these little parameters that you kind of have to tweak to get it just right, and that's just, Facebook's actually built an AI that trains AI to do just that stuff. It, it tweaks parameters and then sees how it reacts. So let's see, we're at step 490. Should be getting close now. Do you care about the numbers coming out particularly? Uh, I, I like to kind of watch. Um, I mean, cross seems to be getting better and better, occasionally mm -hmm. going bad, but come back get better again. And this is something, I don't have a whole lot of images. It's something you'd want at least 100, but ideally you're, you're looking for more like 500 plus. Um, I'm sorry if any images come out that aren't, uh, <laughs> it's a weird, some weird people out there with penguins, but uh, I think I tried to filter most of that out. Uh, yeah, and there's, there's this kind of saying, uh, you know, even if you have like the perfect model, your model's trained perfectly, uh, garbage in, garbage out. So if, if you're putting in, you know, uh, stuff like this and you're telling it it's tux, you know, that's maybe not the best representative, like the best image to train on. So that, that could probably come out. So if you're doing like, you know, pictures of your family to try to sort out the pictures, you pick the, you train on a picture of each person in the family individually mm -hmm. and then you test on the there's all five of you in the picture, and let's flag this as all five of you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, we have our graph, and we have our labels. So now if we come back out to that directory, uh, we'll see we got a PB file. Labels just has, you know, our three, and there's like a non-displaying character that delimits them, so. Uh, or three labels. So let's actually run it now and, and test some things. So um, I apologize, this isn't perfect. I just kind of made it during a session yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> let's see if you're a penguin. Uh, so I just kind of found a couple test images, random things took a photo of my badge at a couple different uh, you know, mirror bar, uh, thought I'd see you know, what it thought of a penguin and an android. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, just random other photos too. So let's see what it thinks of all these. Now, uh, how many people here have used like a notebook or uh, are familiar with, with like a Python notebook? <laughs> Uh, so I just have a, uh, uh, I'm running Conda, which is kind of like a, a virtual environment, but more so for Python. And, and I have Jupyter installed in there, which is a Python notebook. So it's essentially a web server. This is running on localhost that uh, allows you to run Python in your browser. And you can run kind of step by step and see the output. So just up here, all I'm doing is, uh, getting all the file names from this directory, making sure those are coming out in a nice little uh, list. And then in here, what I had starting, started playing with was, was trying to get it to display each image alongside the result. Uh, but what it's doing is it's getting, uh, it's instantiating TensorFlow TensorFlow is, is getting the file from the path and reading it in as, as its raw data. So that fifth dimensional hyper, you know. And it's reading in the label lines. So it's, it's getting the labels, the, the uh, buckets that it's going to try to put this into. Uh, before you do any kind of testing, you have to start a uh, session. So we do a, a TensorFlow uh, session. Um, softmax is actually what's going to break it into, you know, those, those weighted percentages. 
So it's either going to be like 80% tux, 20% not tux. It, it uh, forces everything to add up to one, essentially. So we have a nice percentage output. And then we run our prediction and print it out. And if we run it, we should see it down here start printing out the file and what it thinks it is. Potentially. Print out the actual file that we're working with. This is this is what I get for messing with it right, right before coming up here. <laughs> Jokes on you! I didn't even prepare a demo. I'm just here because Greg isn't. <laughs> All right, so I'll go ahead and restart this. This first triplet, though, should be the Android test. The next triplet should be the second Android test. So when you run Jupyter, it just pops up uh, uh, a new window in your browser. Uh, and. Uh, just a file browser, essentially. So you can go around, find your Python files, and if you want, you can start a new notebook in any flavor of Python. have to rerun this first one, I think. Yeah. I should bring that outside of my loop so it doesn't print every time. And sorry, the OCD in me. So it, it rolls through these first few files pretty fast, and then it, it, it gets to uh, some of the images that I that I'd taken from uh, my webcam on my book here, um, and those have a lot more data to them, so it's going to take it a lot more time to, to uh, kind of compare it against these weights. Um, whenever you hear anyone talk about something being very data rich or, or has a rich data structure, read that as uh, it's going to take a long time. <laughs> but if we look at these first few results, we can see it sees this first Android test here, this image of, of kind of a bunch of, of Minecrafty blocks with, with kind of a silhouette of an Android. Uh, it's, uh, it's only 12% sure that it's an Android. It kind of thinks it might even be Tux. <laughs> it's, it's mostly confident, 57% sure that it's just not anything. So. How did you train not anything? Is that just random pictures? Yep. So it just thinks and it's a random picture. Oh, because it's compared to the other two, it's splitting it out from one. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's actually probably where the most improvement could be made, is, is by giving it kind of everything else, in addition to confidence on Android. But if we look at Android test 2, where it's a pretty clear-cut picture of, of an Android holding a wrench, it's 96% confident that that's Android, 2% sure that it might be Tux. 
So I feel like I've maybe overtrained it on Tux. You know, I have hundreds of images of Tux and, and like 10 of the Android, so it'd probably be more of a split if I gave it more training data on, on the Android side of things, but it thinks this is 40% Tux, but it's pretty confused by what else is going on around what it clearly sees as a penguin. What image is that? Oh, tricky test? Am I? Yeah. Oh. Oh, never mind. My mistake. Oh, what image is that? Uh oh. I hope that's not a. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. So that is a little better. So, so it's saying this is 82% Android and 16% Tux, which actually is an improvement over yesterday. Added a lot more Tux pictures. Yeah. And then. Yeah, your name makes sense though, it's like the overtraining it. Right. Mm -hmm. It'll, if, it, if it's yeah. way more familiar with what a penguin looks like than an android, then it's going to say, oh, well, I'm way more sure that this is. So would it also penguin. be correct to say that it's looking for Tux and trying to find Tux where there is no Tux because it, it's so familiar <laughs> with what Tux looks like? Because it's overtrained. It's going to get a larger result from the Tux classifier if the Tux classifier is better trained. Okay. So what it's going doing is, is it's going through each classifier individually and it's saying, okay, how close is this to what I understand to be an Android, given the weights I've the curve that I've drawn for that? How close is this to being, you know, Tux? And how close is this to being, you know, anything else? And then after it gets the results from each of those, how close it is to each of those, it runs it through the softmax to give you a nice percentage breakdown of each. <clears throat> All right. Well, I think that's about time. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions or? Thank you for, for helping me with my fear of public speaking. Oh. <laughs> Sensing, oh, you know, like, and it's very.